and music I'm going to talk about how you can play a song called Irresistible by Fall Out Boy and there are some this really really cool uh, little synth brass thing at the very beginning if you want to follow some of those notes yeah you can start fourth on the D string and then second on the G fourth fret on the G second on the G fourth fret on the G and then fourth fret on the G third fret on the B fourth fret on the G third fret on the B and then two on the D Open G, second on the G, open G, second on the G, and then third on the B string, fifth fret on the B, third fret on the B, fifth fret on the B, and then back to third fret on the B. So you're gonna pause the video and look at the tab for that. But all together you got kind of that four two four two four, four three four three, two oh two oh two, three five three five three, or the notes you're playing, it's kinda of F sharp, A, B, A, B, B, D, B, D, E, G, A, G, A, D, E, D, E, D, kind of through that part. And the chords that would back that up would start off a B minor chord. Now, if, if you're looking at some really cool rocking, rocking out uh, possibilities, you can start on a B5 power chord, which could be a really easy way to do it. Doing first finger on the A, second fret, third finger on the D, fourth fret. And if you strum the A string and the D string, Ah, the powerful sounds of B5. Now, randomly, you could also play a B5 power chord, working seventh fret on the low E string, third finger on the A ninth fret. You kind of work that for your B5, and then from the, from the B5, we'd be going to a D5 or a D major chord. So you could work open D and second fret on the G string, it's kind of a D5, or you could go fifth fret on the A, seventh fret on the D for a D5, or you could go tenth fret on the low E string, twelfth fret on the A for a D5. Actually, exactly the same notes, actually, that D5 or this D5 or that D5. Anyway, cool, cool way to do that. And then from there, we'd be going to an A5 power chord, kind of working the open A and second fret on the D string, kind of an A5 power chord. Or you could work the low E string on the fifth fret, third finger on the A seventh fret, or an A5. And then from the A, we'd go to an E minor chord, so we'd use an E5 power chord, doing the first finger on the A second, and working the open E and the A string on the second. Or you may dig on going to 7th fret on the A, 3rd finger on the D, ninth fret. And I'm working that for the E5. So through the tune, actually, you may want to try just a down count on that, just to kind of try that kind of B, 2, 3, 4, D, 2, 3, 4, A, 2, 3, 4, E, 2, 3, 4, B, D, A, E. It could be kind of a cool way to kind of work it if you're just looking for some rocking options. Um, or you could use bigger chords. And you could start on a B minor chord. Normally you do this as a second fret bar, second finger on the B third fret, third finger on the D fourth fret, pinky on the G fourth fret. If you strum all those together, the sad sounds of B minor. Now, randomly you may also dig on lifting the pinky, and that a B minor seven. Or you may dig on, on a B minor seven a different way, doing first finger on the A second, second finger on the G second, third finger on the high E second. And if you strum the A string to the high E string, ah, it's kind of a cool way to put in B minor 7. And you may also dig on a drone voicing for B minor, doing first finger on the A second, second finger on the G second, third finger on the B third, pinky on the high E third. Kind of using that for the B minor chord for the tune. Or randomly, you may even dig on lifting the pinky, and kind of working that as a drone option in B minor 11. And then from the B minor, we'd be going to a D major chord. Normally, you do that first finger on the G second. Second finger on the high E second, third finger on the B third, 
If you strum the D string to the high E string, ah, the heavy sounds of D major. Now around D's in general, though, it can be cool to lift the second finger, always a fun finger to lift. Make that a D sus two. Or you could add in the pinky on the high E third for a D suspended, kind of save some stuff around the D. And then from the D, we'd be going to an A major chord. And normally you do this first finger on the D second, second finger on the G second, third finger on the B second. And if you strum all those together, ah, the happy sounds of A major. Now you may also dig on lifting the third finger, making that an A sus two. Or you could add in the pinky on the B third for an A suspended, kind of save some stuff around the A major chord. Or you may even dig on an A7 sus, which can make some of the chord changes easier. Doing first finger on the D second, second finger on the G second, third finger on the B third, pinky on the high E third. If you strum on the A string or the high string, it sounds an A7 sus. You can kind of dig on that. It sounds more unresolved, but definitely a cool sound to have in your, in your head somewhere. And then from the A major, we go into an E minor chord. Normally you do this first finger on the A second, second finger on the D second. You strum all those together. Oh, the sad sounds of E minor. Now you may also dig on adding in third finger on the B third, pinky on the high E third. And if you're digging on that, actually, you may want to try the, kind of that B minor drone idea, kind of the four finger B minor, to the D sus, to the A7 sus, to the E minor seven. And that can be a really easy option because that way three and four can kind of stay down through the tune. And I'm adding a little bit of right hand beauty to that, kind of taking the flat of the right hand and laying it down on top of the saddle. Make that a little sneaky, so you can kind of dig on that to kind of back up that intro part. Or you may dig on a strum pattern. And one of my favorite strum patterns for a 4 4 like this is down, down, up, up, down, up. So if you took the, the B minor drum, because that's easy to hold down, and if we just tried that a lot, we'd have down, down, up. Probably get that to work at tempo actually. Kind of. Or if you're just starting out, you may want to try just splitting that pattern or halving that pattern, kind of doing just down, down up on each chord. Kind of minor. Or do the down down up and then go to the D for the up down up and the A for a down down up and then E minor for the up down up. So you got D minor, down up, D up, down up, A, down up, D minor, up, down up. Or you may have, sometimes I get excited and kind of dig on doing the B minor with the down down. digging on a 16th note strum pattern. And what I mean by that is if you're tapping your foot with the beat, right now we're dividing that beat into two parts with our down, down, up, up, down, up. One, two, one, two, and that's called an eighth note. What a 16th note is, is where you divide that into four parts. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now one of my favorite 16th note strum patterns is the long down, 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 up, up, down, down, up, down, up. And what I mean by that is if you take the B minor drone and do it down for four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's what you'd be doing on the first beat. Then on the second beat, you do it down on one, down on three, up on four. So one, two, three, four, down, 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 down. Then on the third beat, you do it up on two, down on three. So kind of one, two, three, four. Especially when you do 16ths in general. So, kind of that B minor. Or, if you're a little bit more adventurous, you can 
do the B minor with a down, 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 up. And then go to the D for the up, down, down, up, down, up. And then the A with the down, 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 up. And then E minor with the up, down, down, up, down, up. So we have B e minor. six times for our first verse, well twice for the intro, six times for the verse, and then we kind of hit our pre-chorus part, and, and you, you'll hear this cool little bass line there, where you can play third fret on the low E, second fret on the low E, open E, open D, and then third or fourth fret on the A string. Uh, so you kind of got this three, two, open E, open D, fourth fret on the A, it's kind of a waiting move, and the notes you're playing there. G, F sharp, E, and then a D, C sharp. So the chords that would back that up would start on a G major chord. Now if you're digging on the power chord option, you could even work, make this a power chord thing. So maybe we should talk about that first. Kind of doing G5, you know, first finger on the low E third, third finger on the A fifth. It's kind of a G5 power chord. And then for that F sharp note, you may want to back that up with something I call D3 slash F sharp. Where, where you do first finger on the low E for second fret, pinky or the third finger on the A fifth fret. You show just the E and the A string. It's a D note and an F sharp note. Normally the D would be the root of this chord. D, F sharp would be the third. But you've got the F sharp in the bass. So I call that, that D3, D with the third, F sharp. But F sharp's in the bass. So we got G5, D slash, three slash F sharp. Then we go to the E5. Here in, we kind of have our D5 power chord, but that C sharp, you may want to back up with kind of a, an A3 slash C sharp. <laughs> um, doing first finger on the A fourth fret, pinky on the D seventh fret. So we got an A note and a C sharp note. A, B, C is a third, but we got the C sharp in the bass. So I call it A3 slash C sharp, <laughs> which is kind of weird. And on that part, you may just want to do kind of a half thing. It's a little weird timing wise on that last part. You have a G for four. E3 slash F sharp for four, E5 for four, and then D for two, and then the A3 slash C sharp for two. So G, two, three, four, D slash F sharp, E5, D5, A3 slash C sharp, and you're kind of following those notes. Or you could use bigger chords, um, and you start on the G major chord, do first finger on the A second, second finger on the low E third, and third finger on the high E third. And if you strum all those together, oh, the happy sounds of G major. Uh, you may also think I'll put third finger on the B third, pinky on the high third. Kind of working the drone voicing idea. And then from the G, we'd be going to a D major chord, but the F sharp's in the bass. So you may want to take the regular D shape and then take your thumb and kind of cover the, up the low E string second fret for an F sharp note. It's kind of a D major slash F sharp, or D major with an F sharp in the bass. Or if you're digging all the drone voicing, you may dig on a D. Sus slash F sharp, doing first finger on the low E second, second finger on the G second, third finger on the B third, pinky on the high E third. That's a cool option, kind of working the G major, two finger swap for the D slash F sharp, E minor seven. And we have our D major chord, but then for that C sharp note, you may want to back that up with an A major chord. So you could just do the regular A, or if you want to follow that bass note, you can kind of take first finger and cover up the D, G, and B string, second fret take the third finger to cover the A string fourth fret, and now on the middle fourth string, you can have an A major but with a C sharp note in the bass, an A slash C sharp note. And you could just do regular A if that seems like, man, I don't want to jump into this. Just go. Um, so all the way through that part, you'd have kind of that G for four, D slash F sharp, E minor, D for two, A three slash, or A slash C sharp for two. Or if you're doing the down, down, up, up, down, up, the weird part is that E minor D A. You may want to do the E minor with the down, down up, and then the D with the down, A slash C sharp with the down. So we'd have G, down, up, D slash F sharp, E minor, D, A slash C sharp. Or if you're doing the 16th, this could be really cool. On the E minor D A change, you may want to do the down, down, down up on the E minor, and then just do a quick down, down up on the D down, down, up on the A slash C sharp. So all together, 
that way. You had a G. From there, then we'd be going into our chorus part, which is kind of like our verse, but we end up repeating our progression four times, and then we kind of hit our uh, kind of this little abbreviation of, of the intro of like where you go fourth fret on the D, second fret on the G, fourth on the G, second on the G, four on the G, second fret on the G, fourth fret on the G, second on the G, fourth fret on the G, and then back to second fret on the G. All together on that lick, you'd have that. Four two four two four two four two four two. If you kind of dig on that, or F sharp A B A B A B A B A. Might be a cool weight thing to kind of throw in on that last B minor. So you could do any of those things we've been talking about. You have that kind of down idea B minor D. thing I think about adding to the song though is bass notes and a lot of times on that first down of the down down up up down up you throw in a bass for the chord so on the B minor you'd have the A for a bass on the D you'd have the B string for a bass on the A you'd have the A string for a bass on the E minor you'd have low E for the bass and then for the G you'd have low E for the bass B slash F sharp would have low E for the bass E minor would have low E for the bass and then the A slash C sharp would still have the A Up on, on each chord, kind of B minor down and D. This would be a little weird on the E minor DA change. You still may want to do just a bass down up and then down down to kind of work those schools. So you got the G down D slash F sharp E minor D A three C slash C sharp. Or if you're doing the sixteenth on that part, you could work the E minor with the bass down down up and then go to the D for a quick bass down up A slash C 
sharp with a bass down. Tried our second chorus, we, we could work any of those ways we've been talking about. You can dig on the bass down up. Or working the bass is splitting the pattern. Or working the 16th idea. Or working the 16th idea is splitting the pattern. You kind of hear a tag leg. bridge kind of mixes up a lot of those things we've been talking about. It starts off with an acapella part where, where there isn't the guitar part. So you may want to try this working the down idea to fill time on that. Or you can make up rhythm ideas, kind of taking the left hand and just killing the strings. Just kind of make up some stuff and kind of back up the voice. And we kind of come in on that part of our verse. Irresistible by Fallout Boys. Good luck! Hi, wherever you are in YouTube land, this is Munson Summer with Munson Music Live, Munson Guitar Songs, Munson Covers, and Munson Jam Tracks. Thanking you for watching this video, and I hope you got something out of this video. I hope you like this video and subscribe to the channel to see lots more like it. I'm always open to your requests. If you have the song that you love, please let me know so I can write it down on the request list so I can add that to it because there are probably other people out there who love that song too and would love to learn how to play it. So thanks so much for all the love that you give me and I hope that you're doing well and, and kind of figuring out how you can talk with the, the instrument. Um, we are a small music shop in the middle of nowhere in South Carolina and, and you're supporting us by, by watching this channel. Really appreciate all that love. So best of luck and, I, and let me know if there's anything that I can do to help you in, in particular too. Uh, you can contact me on Facebook. Um, you can leave a message here in the comments section and I'm, I, I respond to all the comments that, that I get. So best of luck to you wherever you are.